In this problem, we're looking at a straight pipe, and the water is flowing from the left to the right. The pipe has constant diameter, and in the middle of the pipe, there is a valve. And this valve is partly opened, so that the water still flows, but it's creating a pressure drop inside the pipe. What we know about the flow is that the inlet velocity um, is given, 2 meters per second. The valve here is creating a pressure loss of 3.5 kilopascals, and we have 2 kilograms per second of water coming in. And we're looking for three informations. One is the outlet velocity, V2. The second one is the net force that's applied on the fluid as it transits. And the last question is, what is the power dissipated um, with, with the valve as the flow goes through? Now, let's have a look at this. I'm going to do it wrong. I'm going to show you how not to do uh, the first question, because it's a classic question uh, that pretty much every fluid dynamicist has done wrong at some point in their early student lives. If they tell you they never did this, uh, perhaps take everything they say with a grain of salt. So this is how to do it wrong. Yeah? And so you can see what I do and try to spot the mistake, and then we'll discuss afterwards what the mistake is, and I'll show you how to do it right, of course. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the Bernoulli equation, and I'm going to write it like so. I'm going to say P1 over rho 1, yes, plus 1 half of V1. I'm sorry, this should not be a rho here. Plus 1 half of V1 squared plus gz1 here, um, this is equal to p2, pressure 2, divided by the density 2, yes, plus 1 half of v2 squared plus gz2, like so. And then I'm going to look at point 1, point 2, here, and I'm going to see if anything cancels out, anything crosses out. And sure enough, the altitude is the same, so I can just remove gz1 and gz2 here. And I can look at what I have and what I don't have. V1, I know, so that's kind of cool. Um, P1, I don't really have. Row 1, I have. I don't know P1, I don't know P2, but I know P2 minus P1, because this is the pressure loss through the valve. So P2 minus P1, I have, it's minus three kilopascals. Row 2 is equal to row 1, this is the density of water, it's known. Yeah, how cool is this? Here is V2. So this is the velocity I'm looking for. Let's try to isolate uh, this guy here and put it as a function of all the other ones. So let's have a look at, I'm going to take it step by step because I don't want to do it too fast. One half of V2 squared here, put all the rest on the other side. I got then is equal to uh, P1 over rho 1 minus P2 here over rho 2, like so. And then I got here plus one half of V1 squared. So let's try to work out if I can isolate V2 over here. Um, I'm going to first do a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to do, I'm going to say row 1 is equal to row 2. This is density here. And P2 minus P1, so minus of that, basically, is a delta P that I have of the valve. And I'm going to say, so this is delta P of the valve. And I need to put a minus in there because the delta P of the valve is P2 minus P1. And I have P1 minus P2, yes. And I'm going to divide by... Uh, the density. I'm, I'm looking for space here, so let me push the equal sign a little bit, like so. One half, so one over rho of the delta p valve here, and then I'm left with plus one half of v1 squared. And sure enough, I can clean this up now. So let's have now just um, v2 here. Let me just put the multiply everything on this side by two. So I got here minus two over rho of the delta P valve, and I multiply the two over here, so I get plus V1 squared, yes, and since I have a squared here, I got to put here a square root, so I'm going to put everything here to the power 0 0.5, and now let's put numbers in, um, let's put here minus 2 over density of water, 1000, yeah, 10 to the power 3 kilograms per meter cube. The delta P of the valve is given here. It is minus 3.5 kilopascals. And watch out for the unit times 10 to the power of 3 pascals. Put it in the SI units. Plus V1 squared. And V1 squared is given here as 2. So that's 2 to the power 2, like so. I'm going to put all of this to the power 0 0.5. Yeah. 
type this into the calculator, which I did for you before, like so. This works out to be just 11, 2 times 3.5, 7, 7 um, plus 4, that's 11. 11 to the power of 0 0.5 turns out to be 3.317. Yeah. What was I calculating? Immediately put units. It was V2, so these are meters per second. V2 meters per second. Again, I watch out. This is wrong, yeah? I don't want you to believe this is correct, yeah? But let's pretend it's correct for a moment. And I just say here, oh yeah, velocity increase. Why did the velocity increase? Because of course the, the pressure decreases. Pressure decreases, so velocity's got to increase. No, no? Okay, so where, where is the mistake in this, in this page here? Let me show you first why it's wrong and what's the problem with this result. What should immediately ring a bell when you write this result here? Not a little bell, but uh, like an annoying beep, beep, beep alarm with a red light flashing in your head. Let's have a look at the problem. At the inlet here, you have two meters per second of water through a certain area and with a certain density. So you have a certain mass flow. Actually, you have two kilograms per second of water coming in. When they exit, the velocity has increased, but the area is still the same, the density is still the same. So you have more mass flow exiting your pipe than coming in. Where is the mass flow coming from? Uh, who is creating all of these kilograms per second more um, than we had at the inlet? And their answer is, of course, nobody. Um, if we have a pipe that has constant cross-section, you may have a, as big a drop of pressure as, as you can in the middle. It's still not going to increase the mass flow at the outlet. The correct answer, and then we'll look at the uh, why it's wrong to use the Bernoulli equation in this case. The correct answer is so. The mass flow here is rho 1 v1 a1, and it's also equal to rho 2 v2 a2. And this is equal to 2 kilograms per second. And so it doesn't take long to say to see that if I have a1 is equal to e2, yeah, a1 is equal to a2, and then I have rho 2 is equal to rho 1, then I have v2 is equal to v1, yes, and it's also equal to 2 meters per second. Period. Okay? You cannot create or destroy mass by just adding a valve inside the pipe. Okay. So now let, let me let me show you what's wrong with this equation. Let me show you what is wrong with this. None of the math in here is wrong. This is all correct as far as I, I can see. What is incorrect is when in my mind, somewhere in the back of my mind, there was a little voice that said, use the Bernoulli equation. Because this is not this is not correct. The Bernoulli equation does not apply when you have losses inside the pipe. And so you may be thinking, well, it's it's easy for you to say, Olivier, but there are half a billion equations in this lecture notes, yeah. And on top of this, some of them are wrong and are gonna push me off the tracks. So how do I know which is right and which is wrong at any given time? Because this looked pretty tempting to me. And I see your point. And let's see what equations are available to you. Um, yes. There are basically three equations, um, and they have different forms, different shapes, but there are basic three equations in fluid dynamics, and these are written here at the start of the exercise sheet. You have mass conservation, you have momentum balance, yeah, balance of momentum, which is about force, and you have balance of energy, uh, which is about power. Yeah? So you have here, you have three things going on. One tells you about mass flow. One tells you about net force, and one tells you about power. Yeah. These are these three equations here in this form. The conditions for them are written below, um, and they are for a fixed control volume with a steady flow. Okay. Fixed control volume means your pipe here is not inflating. It's not getting bigger. It's not getting smaller. Inflating or deflating. And steady flow means if you take a picture of this and you take a picture every second, um, those pictures are always the same. It does not change with time. Yeah? These two conditions are pretty reasonable. They're not arbitrary. And as long as these conditions apply, um, then you're safe using these equations. The Bernoulli equation has many more restrictions. And I'm not going to go into detail about this because it is much easier to use just here the 
uh, the balance for energy equation. If I had used this equation here, then I would have had here to think about the difference between I1 and I2. And since there are losses inside the pipe, I would have refrained from crossing them out. Certainly, GZ and GZ2 would have gone. Um, but now I can see that there are th exchanges between three terms that can happen inside the pipe. I, P, and V. Here. You know, I'm not adding any power as input or extracting any power as output from the pipe. This is just a valve, no, no moving part in here. I'm not adding or removing heat, so those two terms are zero. And so the fluid is left to exchange between V, P, and I. V is constrained by the fact that we know the flow is flowing. Two kilograms per second are coming in. They have to get out of the pipe. Yeah? And since the, the area here is not changing, V has got to be the same. I know this for sure. And so I can see now that the delta P, the change in pressure created by the valve, will all create a delta I, a change of internal energy of the water. In other words, I destroy energy as pressure with my valve in the middle with this piece of friction here. And I put this energy back into the flow as internal energy. It's going to increase its temperature by a very small amount because the heat capacity of fluids is very high. But this, all the energy that extracted by the valve is put back into the water. Okay, So if I had used this equation, then it would have allowed me to stop and see that there's no possible way to calculate velocity with this energy equation uh, in this case. And the mass flow equation is enough to solve the flow. So in case you're lost, Ask yourself what you want to calculate, and remember that these three equations are almost always good. Fluid, the, the pipe flow is not expanding or contracting. Yes, your pipe is not accumulating mass or not. And it's a steady flow. These three equations are good for you. All right. Okay. So we're done with the first question. The other two questions are going to be much easier and much uh, simpler to solve. You're going to see. So the second thing we're after is the net force applying on the pipe. Well, for this, I can draw my pipe like so, and the valve in the middle, and I'm going to draw a control volume, which is basically the area I'm interested in, yeah? the volume of interest, and I'm going to draw it like this here. This is a control volume. I call it CV control volume here. And I look at my vectors coming in, and I have V1 here as a vector, and I have V2 here exiting. And the length of V2 and the length of V1 are the same, and the directions are the same, so that I have, in fact, V2 here is equal to V1 as a vector, like so. And so it doesn't take long. When I look back on my momentum balance equation, which is here, here, to write it like so, the net force, which is equal to the mass flow, multiplied by V2 minus V1 here, the mass flow may not be zero, but V2 minus V1 is zero, or more precisely, vector zero. Yes, that's going to be here, zero, vector zero, F net. Just to be clear, um, this is a vector, and so just for you to see and to you to remember that arrows, equations with arrows, have many dimensions, I could also write it like this. I could write it as the three components of F net. F net Y and F net Z here, like so. This is a vector, and this vector is equal to 0, 0, 0. You don't have to do this, I just want to make clear. These, this is actually three equations, okay? All right, and the last question we are asked is, what is the energy dissipated as friction? What is the power lost here uh, through, well, through the presence of the valve as the wire passes through the valve, how much power? You can ask yourself if you want, uh, you can formulate the question in a slightly different way. You could say um, you have your pipe here with a valve um, and then you plug this pipe here back into the inlet and you put a little pump. Should work like this. Yeah. And the pump here pushes the water through the valve. What is the power uh, that you need to put into this pump to compensate for the friction inside the valve? It's just a conceptual idea. Yeah. And this is solved, power is solved using the energy balance equation. So I go back to the script over here and I just copy the energy balance equation. And let's just 
Again, take time to formulate each of the terms. You're not in a hurry. You're not trying to save 20 seconds. So let's write them out. I have power as heat, net given to the flow, yes, plus power as work, net given or taken away from the flow, is equal to the mass flow here. And I'm going to condense this into a delta equation. So I'm going to say delta I, yes, plus delta P over rho, rho remains constant in this equation, um, plus one half of delta of V squared, I'm sorry, V squared, like this, yes, plus G delta Z, like so. Yeah. And so I can see that the net power given as heat, net power given as work, causes a change in different forms of energy in the, in the flow. And in this case, we have a simple, simple valve here. There is no power given from the outside or taken to the outside, either as work or as heat. So both of those terms are zero here. And I'm just left with the addition of those terms. Delta Z, the change in altitude, that's zero over here. Delta V squared, zero here. And I can see now here that I have zero is equal to mass flow here, multiplied by delta I plus delta P over rho. Yeah. And this is what I meant earlier when I said the entire change in pressure is going to change in internal energy, delta I. And the power um, that goes to increase the temperature of the flow, the internal energy of the flow here, is m dot delta I. The power here, uh, dissipation, is equal to m dot delta I here. And I can see through this here, it is equal to m dot times minus delta P over rho, like so. Yeah. And let's put numbers into this. And we'll say P dissipation, like so, is yes. m dot minus delta P over rho, and m dot is, in this case, two kilograms per second. The delta P is minus 3.5, so minus delta P will be plus 3.5 times 10 to the power 3 because it's kilopascals. And then divide this by the density, which is 1000 or 10 to the power 3. And so I can see that I have 2 times 3.5, and this is 7 watts. 7 watts of power. That's not a lot of power here. P dissipation. like so okay so again when you're stuck uh, not knowing what equation you have to look for remember what those three basic equations say read the conditions if they apply you're always safe better take a big equation here and cross out the terms one by one um, than take shortcuts and apply equations that will run you into the wall good luck